The relationships reset was hard for me, and let's just jump right in. This is the seventh chapter of my book, Authenticity Reset, and because it was so challenging for me to go through, I did give it a gray cloud, and I'll talk about all of the reasons why as we move through the chapter together. Let's start with the title page for this chapter in my bullet journal. I chose a quote from the novel I was reading, and it was so timely. The quote was from the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, and it reads, relationships chisel the final shape of one's being. You'll notice in this chapter that I have covered up some of my journaling for specific exercises. I've tried to keep these to a minimum, but I do reference specific relationships in my life, which is why I've covered them up. I've once again used the same format for the list of exercises, but you may notice that in the explore section, I've actually completed more exercises than I have in the past. I completed four exercises instead of my usual two, and that is because I had so many things I needed to work through for this chapter that even though I didn't really want to do any of the exercises, I felt a lot of resistance, but I knew the exercises would help me. The ones I chose were curiosity, prompts, roles and gratitude and we'll go through each of those when we get to the explore section the first exercise in the arrive section is reaction and i once again listened to me reading the personal story in this book i had some very strong reactions that came up i wrote a lot about my relationship with my father that is the one that is top of mind right now moving on to the word cloud i kept it really simple at the top of the page are words that have a positive association for me when it comes to relationships, things like connection, enjoyment, curiosity, laughter, love, listening. At the bottom of the page, I have some words that represent more challenging themes for me in terms of relationships. So these are words like vulnerability, disrepair and repair, conflict, opacity, rejection, disharmony, masking, and that sort of thing. The pendulum exercise was quite interesting for me because I realized that I'm super interested in the topic of relationships and I spend a lot of time thinking about relationships, but I find them very confusing and fraught. So I don't feel very knowledgeable about relationships and I don't really view my relationships as a way to treat myself. Because I love alone time so much, I actually view that more as a way to treat myself, but I do know that I feel really good after meeting up with some of the people in my life. Moving into the observer section, the journal exercise involved me responding to a series of questions about my interactions throughout the day, and I noticed some patterns right away, even before I did the patterns exercise, which is on the next page. What I usually do for this exercise is I jot down my day-to-day -day observations on my tick tick. So this is my virtual to-do list, and then when I'm ready to write in my bullet journal, I will usually transcribe or summarize what I've jotted down. This this time, instead of organizing by days, I organized by morning, afternoon, and evening because I noticed specific patterns about my interactions at these times of day. Even though I do like to load my mornings with things to do, I think if I shift some of my interactions to the afternoon, that would really help with my energy level. When I feel lonely, which is very rare, but it does of course happen because I'm a human being, it usually happens in the afternoon after my nap. That's the time when I'm most likely to feel lonely. So having some touch points in the afternoon, especially after I have a nap, that really helps to bring up my energy levels, my motivation, and my feeling that I'm not alone in the world. So that's what I've been experimenting with since I noticed that. Next is the patterns exercise where I drew out a few more things that I noticed during my week of observation based on the sentence stems that I have in my book. Let's go ahead and get into the four exercises I completed in the explore section. The first one I did was curiosity and there were a couple of relationships that came up for me. One of them I've touched on already, which is my relationship with my dad. So this is a parental relationship. And then the other type of relationships, which has been top of mind for a long time, is friendship. The reason I wanted to do the curiosity exercise was because I wanted to jot down a whole bunch of different resources so I don't forget. These are books that I want to read about 
these relationships that I'm interested in, as well as podcasts that I want to listen to. I have completely covered up the prompts exercise, but as you can see, I wrote two full pages for this exercise, so there was a lot that came up for me. The prompts exercise involves exploring one relationship in more detail by responding to a series of prompts in the form of questions and sentence stems. It's probably no surprise that I explored my relationship with my father and I had a lot of realizations. It was a very helpful exercise, but I also realized that I probably need some therapy in this area here. The next exercise I completed was role and this is probably one of my favorite exercises. I'm not quite sure why. What I did first was I jotted down all of the different roles that I play in my life, so things like wife, friend, sister, daughter, niece, neighbor, etc. I picked one of those relationships. I decided to focus in on the relationship with my husband because I needed something warm and fuzzy after that really challenging exercise where I explored the relationship with my dad. So I went ahead and did this exercise jotting down the responses to the questions in my book and I really do love my relationship with my husband. It is very supportive and nurturing and loving. It's just a wonderful relationship. Of course we have our issues, we have times where we're in conflict, but we're pretty good at working through these times, and I'm really, really grateful for that. There's a second part to the roles exercise, which explores your relationship with yourself, and maybe that's why I like this exercise so much. In terms of the roles I take on in my relationship with myself, I am a planner, a critic, a cheerleader, provider, entertainer, caregiver, best friend, and constant companion. And then I went ahead and jotted down some thoughts in response to some of the questions in my book. The next exercise is gratitude. I really wanted to pull out things that I'm grateful for, for all of the people in my life. So I wrote down a bunch of things and I did name names, so that's why I've covered up the majority of them. Moving into the connect section, this section was very challenging, but the memories exercise was awesome. I decided to do this timeline and this timeline is basically when I met the people who are currently in my life. I had to guess on some of them, but they're in the ballpark. And what I tried to do was I tried to space them out to scale. So this was super fascinating to me because I was born in 1978. That's when I met my dad. So he has been in my life for... 45 years now. I also met my aunt at around the same time. I may have met her earlier, but the earliest photo that I have with her is when I was around two to three years old. But those are the only two people who are still in my life until my teenage years. I've not kept in touch with anyone from grade school or any other relatives, really. My birth mom passed away when I was in my 20s and I completely lost touch with that side of the family. So there's a lot of emptiness in terms terms of my relationships from that time in my life. A lot of it is because my dad and I moved so frequently. So when we settled back in Toronto and when he remarried, that was when my relationships started again. Of course, I had relationships in between, but those relationships are in the past. They're not ongoing. And then I had a cluster of relationships from my teenage years to university. So this is when I met my stepmom, my sisters were born during this time. I still keep in touch with a couple of friends from high school and some people that I met in university. I also keep in touch with a couple of people from my first full-time job and also my part-time job during that time because I worked two jobs for quite a long time. The interesting thing is, this is when my dad became less strict. I was no longer the only person in his life that he had to care for. He had a new wife and two new daughters, and as a result, I got a lot more freedom. I was allowed to hang out with my friends, whereas before, I wasn't really allowed to see them outside of school. So noticing this was so interesting, because when I got my freedom, that was when I started developing 
developing relationships outside of the relationship with my father. What I noticed when I was completing this exercise was that a lot of my relationships are from work. So that's one thing I want to think about is how I can start or develop relationships outside of work because work isn't going to be there forever and even though I might still keep in touch with some of the people at my workplaces, I think it's also important for me to meet new people because I'm constantly changing, my interests are changing, my hobbies are changing, and it would be really nice to have some people to share my new interests and hobbies with. I wrote a lot for the disentangling exercise, so I'm not going to go through it all. I do want to talk about a change that I've noticed in my life, and that is that I no longer ask for relationship advice from other people in my life. So for example, if I have an issue with hubby, I will try to address it with hubby rather than asking my friends for advice. I think I used to ask for relationship advice a lot and it ended up being a lot of complaining and ranting and ruminating. When I keep complaining about something, when I keep ranting about something, that makes me feel worse. It gets me all worked up. It makes me even angrier. The anger just feeds itself. I've been working on trying to feel the anger just internally but also seek out my inner wisdom because I often know already what I truly want to do. I don't really need to talk about it over and over and over again with a bunch of different people. I can decide on my own and I can address the issue with the person directly, not involve other people. This is not easy by any means and it really, I guess, depends on the relationship. Of course, there are still times when I need to vent if something is really fresh and it's still bothering me, but I try not to drag something up from the past just for something interesting to talk about. So I really love that change that I've made. I'm really proud of it. In perceptions, my inner critic tells me that I'm a bad person if I don't like someone or if I don't want to be around someone. I realized that my inner critic really prioritizes other people's feelings over my own and that I should be a nice girl around people even if it comes at the expense of my own comfort and happiness. But then my inner best friend reminds me that I don't have to like everyone. It's okay to have boundaries. Not everyone is going to like me and that is also okay. My inner best friend knows that I I can be respectful and kind, but also live my life in a way that's aligned with my own inner compass. Interconnections didn't have a lot of aha moments, but one pattern that I did notice is that I've been changing a lot in terms of my relationships. So I used to be a huge people pleaser and I would just kind of like go with the flow. I would defer to the other person and what they wanted to do, but now I am more vocal about suggesting things that I might like to do, which feels really good. But of course, I'm still flexible. I recognize that relationships are a collaboration, a meeting of two people. So it's not all me and it's not all the other person. But I'm finding that I have a better balance and I'm also better at speaking up on my preferences and my desires. The last section is reflect and pendulum redux was again very interesting. In particular, I'm talking about my relationship with my husband as well as with my friends. I feel like they are more nuanced and multi-layered now. They're not as black and white in my mind. I feel excited to learn about the people around me and see our relationships change over time and as well to learn more about relationships in general. The other thing that I've noticed in the past three to five years is that I'm more at peace with relationships not being a certain way. I can see the relationship for what it is. I'm more realistic about it versus being idealistic. So coming back to the relationship with my father, I I really want it to be a certain way, but I'm probably never going to have that. And that's not a pessimistic view. That's a very realistic view of knowing this person for 45 years of my life. And I'm at peace with that. I can still be kind and considerate and respectful, grateful to my father, but 
I don't need to strive to have a deeper relationship. I'm open to it, but I'm not going to force it. It doesn't have to be that way. I'm working on letting go of having this ideal picture in my mind of what a relationship should be, whether that be a relationship with a parent or a sibling or a partner or a friend. That doesn't mean I'm not going to change and the relationship isn't going to change, but there's no end goal in mind. Most of the statements in my looking up exercise had the same theme and I'll talk about that more when I go through the summary. The treasures exercise is the last exercise in the book and here I just pulled together all of the nuggets that I learned about myself throughout the course of this chapter. I've already talked about most of them so let's just jump into the summary where I share my looking up statements from my past three resets. The first reset was in July of 2021 and in that reset my my looking up statement was, I see myself as someone who listens deeply to myself and others. During this time, I became very aware of the many, many issues that I have when it comes to relationships, how challenging they are for me. At this time, I was a people pleaser, but I also became very resentful of people because I didn't know how to express my truth. I didn't know how to set boundaries or state my preferences. And so I would just people please, I would defer to the other person and feel very, very resentful until I eventually got over it. So I realized that this wasn't a healthy way for me to be in relationships. So I started listening deeply to myself. What is it that I truly want? What are my preferences? What are my ideas? What are my hopes and dreams? And I realized that I was also not a great listener when it came to other people. So I really worked on listening when someone else was speaking instead of responding right away or thinking about my response or trying to solve an issue, I would really try to just listen and ask questions. I still need to work on this a lot. It doesn't come easily for me, but it's something that I started back in July of 2021. My second reset was in January of 2023, and my looking up statement was, I see myself as someone who has a best friend within myself. This was very fitting because my annual theme for 2023 was be your own best friend, and I worked hard on this, and that helped me be more authentic in relationships rather than being a people pleaser and I think my relationships improved because of it. My third reset is the one I just completed and my looking up statement was I see myself as someone who can gently let go of my relationship expectations even when I want so badly for things to be different. I talked about this a lot in terms of my relationship with my father and this is what I'm referencing here but I'm also letting go of a lot of relationship expectations with hubby with my friends, with my neighbors, with strangers. Strangers don't have to be a certain way to me. I don't have to be a certain way to them. We can be polite, but I know things happen and we're not always polite to each other. I'm really trying to let go of expectations in general when it comes to relationships. I realize that just because I've changed or just because I'm a certain way doesn't mean that everyone around me is the same. And I want to appreciate those differences because we're not all the same and that is actually a beautiful thing. Thank you all so much for watching this video. The next chapter in my book is all about sleep, so I will be back very soon with the intro video for that chapter. Until then, please take care and bye for now!